Hello, everybody! It is Wednesday! How are you tonight? Hello, Kitty! How are you? Great to have you here on this Wednesday night! It is Hope Day! Hey, Patty! Great to have you here! I know you're in my inbox. Hey, Rick, good to have you here. It's hump day. Everybody, yes it is. You guys are rocking your way right through week uh, 45, 46. Hey, Sylvia, another person that's in my inbox so I got to respond to. Adele and Dazzle, who I probably owe something to, and I don't even know if they're in my inbox. I've got so many in my inbox tonight. Hey, Kath, great to have you here. Good to have everybody here live. What are we grateful for this hump day? Vina's with us live. Great to have you here, Vina. Erica, great to have you here. Yes, I'm Moorish. I've had a very, very busy day, Michelle, after I finished cleaning up the snow this morning. That, that sort of... Uh, uh, that that sort of thrown me off a couple of hours today, uh, but I uh, I'm trying to make up time. I'll probably really catch up tomorrow. Hey, Pat in the peanut gallery, I owe you a call too. Well, I'm remembering at least everybody or most of the people I owe calls to <laughs> tonight. It's been that kind of day. I know uh, my my uh, call list has ballooned today, but that's okay. I will catch up with everybody. I'll catch up with a lot of you tomorrow. But what are we all grateful for this Wednesday? What are you all grateful for on this Wednesday night? Kelly's with us. Great to have you here tonight, Kelly. That I'm live here on this Wednesday night. Well, you know, I mean... Kitty, uh, I'm glad you're home in front of the fire, but I, I get the snow shutting things down early, even if, it's, even if it's not what you would have shut down for before. In a pandemic world, uh, it doesn't take a lot for, of snow to really uh, say it's not worth being open. So, uh, snow in Indiana tonight, all-wheel drive. Yeah, I have, uh, I like, uh, all-wheel drive is good, although they couldn't get the propane delivery truck, and, and they really, really, really should know better. Our, our driveway is a challenging driveway when it's all dry and sunny, and we were like their first stop before, um, uh, you know, when the truck came out today. We were like one of their first stops, and our driveway hadn't been plowed yet, and, uh, and uh, so they couldn't get up our driveway. Our plow guy got there, and there were these huge ruts trying to get up the driveway. And he's like, what the heck? And I'm like, you know, I didn't know about it till late in the day, but that, that all that happened. But, uh, you know, that was sort of the day the way it was today with our driveway. Uh, my deal with my plow guy, because I know my driveway is difficult, is, is I don't need to be his first stop. Take care of all those commercial clients first, and then, uh, you know, make sure he gets us and cleans us up, because we can always... Uh, grateful for good friends and family. It makes difficult times better. Yes, it does, Kelly. Grateful for a warm house and plenty of food, Kath. Yes. Uh... <laughs> I love it, Michelle, that if it flurries in a neighboring state, our folks stay home. Uh, there, there, there's Virginia Beach for you. Well, folks, let's get this started because I got stuff you want to hear about and uh, we should talk about it. So let's get going. And you guys are standing between me and dinner since Rebecca made dinner tonight, but I didn't have time for dinner before uh, we got on. We start this program every night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start this program every night. Tonight we are on page 116. Good morning. I believe in you. Not always in our leaders. Not always in the subway schedules. But always in you. 
unwavering. That is our good morning tonight, folks. That is, that is our good morning. What do we got going on? I know a lot of you have got your PPP going. What did I do with my glasses? Oh, they're over here. I got too many spots to put things down in this room. On this set. At least on the old set, I only had I only had one or two spots to put things down. I might have dropped my whole pile, but I would only have one or two spots to drop things down. Uh, things to look for on our next set. Um, the um, the banking lobby is saying PPP loan applications have been held up over systemic problems. Uh, that the SBA's loan portal um, software update is uh, generating issues that have nothing to do with the actual uh, your actual PPP application. So it's kicking lots of applications back, which is causing a problem, according to the American Bankers Association. Um, um, things like it's uh, erroring if it's uploading a second draw application uh, for people or uh, you know saying that your first la loan is under review even when it's not and I know lots of you have been getting your PPPs through and it's been going through so I'm thankful for that that we haven't had a lot of those issues in this group uh, but I am making you aware that, uh, you know, the uh, American Bankers Association is concerned about that. Did I say hello, Julie Jankowitz? Hello, Julie Jankowitz. Great to have you here. Um, so that's one thing. Okay, so then, so the next thing I got to talk about is because I've been on the phone with a lot of you this week and I've been emailing with a lot of you. And one of the issues that's come up uh, uh, congratulations, Kathy. I'm glad you got vaccinated today. Yes, that is true. Uh, that is how several people I know that have gotten vaccinated uh, have gotten vaccinated because they uh, because somebody else didn't show up. No PPP. Well, as long as as long as they've got an SBA approval, Kitty, that's all that matters. That's that's the, that's the big hurdle, and that's what the American Bankers is talking about. So, if your bank has said they've given you an approval, uh, then uh, then it's just on the bank's hands to get the paperwork uh, to either sign or e-sign, depending on how your bank is doing it, uh, so we can get it through. Uh, but but at least that's a good sign. The money is reserved for you. Well, they're learning too, Rose. That's why they keep on asking for more paperwork and everything. They're, they're learning what they need and what they're supposed to be doing and everything else. It's a, it's a learning experience for everybody. Um, but, but it will come together. So let's talk about some of the issues that have been coming through that people have been having um, with uh, get even finding out whether you're eligible, not even applying yet, but whether you're eligible. So, so let's talk about some of the mistakes I've been finding in your books this week. Affecting PPP eligibility. One of the mistakes I've been finding is that people have in QuickBooks taken the PPP as income. So they've listed it up with their sales. So if I'm looking at an income statement in QuickBooks, I'm seeing it in with their sales, their PPP deposit. So that's inflating your sales and reducing it. Remember, to get a second PPP, you have to be down 25% in any one quarter in 2020 versus the same quarter in 2019. And what I'm seeing on some people's books is they entered the PPP as income. And, and if they're looking at the total sales in QuickBooks, it's right up there as total sales um, included the amount of their PPP, which is inflating their sales and um, is part of the reason why they wouldn't qualify if you're looking at your QuickBooks income. Uh, 
So, um, so that is a, a, that is a, it, it, it's a, it's a simple clerical error, but it's inflating your sales. So I don't want you to see you not get it because your sales are inflated. Okay. Uh, incorrectly inflated. The other reason that some of you are, are not, um, are having an issue um, it, yeah when, when I've been looking at some uh, income statements and things I'm like hang on a second here Michelle uh, this numbers over there and it shouldn't be okay um, I'd rather see you label it ask my accountant and throw it off to the side than um, than listed as income or listed as sales, which, you know, um, if, if you entered it as a loan, then it wouldn't show up that way. It would just show as, it would increase your bank balance, but it would not show as a thing. Yeah, some of the uh, documents that uh, some of the banks are asking for this time, they just don't, the bank Let's be real. So that's one error that I'm seeing. The other error is more complicated. So you followed me on that. If you listed your PPP as income, okay, you're overstating your, your sales uh, for the period that you're trying to compare to, which many of you are trying to compare second quarter of 2019 to second quarter of 2020. The other issue that I have found with many of you lately is that your books, okay, that your bookkeeper does or that your accountant does are books of cash, okay? Cash payments in, cash received. So cash that you receive and cash that's paid out. And that sounds logical, right? If I have cash that I received, I record it as income. And if I have cash that I spent, I record it as an expense. That's simple enough. But in resale, there are a lot of non-cash transactions that are being left out of the equation at, when you do that, when you account for things that... Uh, the idle is also the same, so that is correct. If you got the idle, the idle is a loan, not income. So make sure the idle is not listed in the income section or as sales. Many of you, that's the only thing you know how to enter in QuickBooks. If you got money, you enter it as sales or income, and um, you don't know any different. And that's okay. I'm not asking you to be experts at this, okay? Um, with the idle and the PPP, you create those as loans in your system. And that will create the cash inflow, which will go to your checking account, but it will not go there. It'll go there as proceeds from financing uh, versus uh, income. One key issue that's inflating your guys' income, okay, and making some of you not qualify on the surface for a second PPP, okay, until you adjust that. The other thing that is um, causing that is many of you, I have found, um, are just keeping cash on the books in, in uh, QuickBooks or, or whatever accounting system you use. And what I mean by that is you're only recognizing the cash transactions. So my credit card or cash, okay, or, okay, they, credit cards or cash, or um, you spent cash or wrote a check or something out of the bank. So you paid a bill, you paid a consigner, whatever, you wrote a check. That's correct, Rose. You Both the idle and the PPP are categorized as long-term liabilities because they're liabilities for more than a year. So what you're leaving out in the resale business, okay, and this is why, you know, even a lot of accountants don't ask about it, but so back to this. So if you're only recording cash deposits or credit card deposits to your account, and you're only recording checks that you write, you're leaving a lot off the table. 
you're leaving a huge amount of your sales off the table. And so because store credit is so prevalently used, okay, by your consigners, and even if you're buy outright, um, giving uh, people credit and carrying that on your books is so prevalent in this industry, um, it is important that you recognize both the sales and expense of that on your books. Okay, as Michelle just stated, it, it properly, better properly values your business, but in the sake of getting a PPP, a second PPP, it can create a significant disparity um, that you may not be seeing on a cash basis, okay? Of uh, uh, just looking at the cash and credit card deposits into your account, that's not telling the whole story. So, uh, that is the correct thing. So when a consigner uses their credit towards a purchase, I credit, credit sales and debit consigner payouts on our books. And that is the correct way to do it, okay? And when you sell something, when, when you, the, the inverse is also true. So that item that sold, okay, increases somebody else's consigner's payable, okay? So when you sell something, when I sell this sweater, okay, um, you may have used your store credit for it to buy it. So you gave me $20, which went to sales, $20 to sales, okay? And $20 reduced your store credit. But it also, whatever the percentage I pay my consigner, it went up on my, on my account because it was my sweater that sold. So uh, my, uh, my account, my consigner balance went up a little bit. Somebody's account balance went down, somebody else's went up a little bit, and sales went up. Does that make sense? And, and those transactions, I'm finding more and more of you have left out. Okay? And if you left them out in 2019, you may be undervaluing your sales of 2019 and undervaluing your sales in 2020 and not showing... Uh, not showing your actual difference and thus not being off the 25% that you need. I had several conversations this week um, about that with, with, your, with you guys. So I, it's a big enough problem that we have to talk about it because if, if you're if you're not showing enough difference, um, it could be because you're not recognizing all of your sales. And you're also undervaluing what you're doing for business. So, um, and, and this is where you end out with disparities between whatever software you're using. And it doesn't matter whether you're using uh, Liberty or Traxier or, or Consign Pro or Computer Peeps or Resale Global or any of them. A a um, any of the softwares. Uh, right, and you should. In most states, you would pay sales, uh, sales tax on store credit transactions as well. You would collect sales tax uh, on store credit transactions in most states. There are a couple states where you're allowed to do tr trades where that does not, uh, there is not a sales tax event with that. There's a couple of states that allow that. Um, so, um, you know, just keep that in mind because that's one of the problems I am seeing this week uh, as I've been working through things with you guys. Is not recognizing that revenue properly on the books. So I want to make sure we're there with that uh, because I want everybody that's entitled to a second PPP, a second, a second PPP. People in the industry call it a 3P, a second 3P. I don't know that that's any better than calling it a PPP, um, but, uh, you know, if you are entitled to it, if you are, if your business should be getting one, I want to make sure you get a second one. 
and uh, because this is about business stability, keeping your business stable, giving it a good, solid foundation to grow your way out of this. That is what this is about. Um, I also got to talk about if this is all that. <laughs> Ah, uh, Michelle, it's good to have you here live. I love it when you're able to attend live. Uh, when I'm not conflicting with your show, where you're selling away there. Um, um, the other thing I need to talk about with the PPP, while we're talking PPP tonight, okay, it's the P that won't go away. Uh, Rose, that's the way I do it. I do it a journal entry. It really depends on what system you're using. There's some systems that will send it over directly to QuickBooks as a daily entry um, to do all this restore credits. Um, some people like to do it on a daily basis, so their books are always right up to date, right up to the very day. Um, some people like to do it weekly. I, I prefer the... Uh, I prefer the monthly uh, journal entry. I have a journal entry that I do every month um, that, that um, takes care of that. And I also do it to make sure that my uh, gift cards payable is up to date and everything on my books. So, um, but I do that once a month. Um, but, but I have worked with others and, and whichever way is fine as long as you're doing it and doing it consistently. So there's not a right or wrong with that to do it monthly, to do it weekly, to do it daily. Um, there, there's not a right or wrong. I, I've seen it as much as quarterly, which is fine. Um, the, the key, uh, the key is to do it, um, and to be consistent with it. And it really depends on how big or small you are and how vital um, the information is uh, daily. The bigger the company, uh, the more important it is daily, Rose. Um, but uh, I, I'm with you. I, I do a monthly journal entry for it um, to bring it all into sync. Um, but that, that's neither here nor there. So let's talk about um, one other thing with the PPP tonight. So some of you, this is your, going to be your first PPP. For some of you, you never got a PPP the first time, mostly because your idle advance was either bigger um, or what your PPP would be that you did not go for it. And now with the rule changes, it makes total sense for you to get a PPP, okay? Because the idle advance is going to stay a grant. And, um, the, um, and you can get a PPP, which will also be forgiven and, and converted to a grant. So that's a wonderful thing. The great thing is you are also if you do it right so if this is your first ppp right now you're applying for your first ppp if you do it right you actually qualify for a second ppp and you could get a second ppp before the money runs out okay there are certifications that you have to give of that you um have you either have to have used up your PP, your first ppp or will use it up, okay, and you have to be able to document that. But as a first-time PPP um, getter, you can also get a second PPP right now. So you can go get your first PPP, start spending it down, okay, with uh, to 60 per, 62 to 65% on payroll, um, 35 to 37%, uh, 38% on other items and be on track to spend that down. And then um, later in February or early March, you can apply for a second PPP and get it under this program, okay? It has to be timely, 
um, but you can actually do that. So you could get the idle advance, which you already got, which is why you didn't get the first PPP, the PPP the first time around. So now you can get a first PPP, and um, if you can spend through it appropriately uh, or be on track to, you can get a second PPP best by end of February, early March, based on the current run rate of the money for the PPP. Okay, the program technically runs to the end of March. But as long as you're showing and can certify that you're going to use it, um, you would be able to get a second PPP. And that's something that a lot of you uh, hadn't even thought about it. And so in a very short period of time, you could have the benefits of two PPPs. And I want you to be able to get that. Again, this is all about getting you to the other side, having a strong foundation, not being in the red, but wearing red, okay, and keeping your business as strong as possible. So that's why this is so important. That's why I cover this. And, um, and I know this, there's a lot of you that are in that position. There's a lot of you now able to get your first PPP, and I'm excited for that. I really am. Um, and to then be able to timing is everything, get a second PPP right behind it, um, really will help strengthen your business, okay? Really will help you uh, grow your way out of this. Again, that's all, that is what this is all about. This is about growing your way out of this, being stronger on the other side of this. And uh, I, that is what I am committed to. That's what you're doing. And that's how we're going to get to the other side of this. So that's my PPP stuff tonight. Was that enough PPP for you? I mean, PPP 6, Michelle says. Yes, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot to take in. I know it is because I know by your questions that I'm getting over there. Um, I know um, I got a lot of complicated calls to make this week um, just to keep everybody in sync. Um, I want to uh, keep you all in sync with it, and I want you to get the maximum benefit as po that's possible. So uh, that is what I am keeping my fingers crossed for with you, and that's why we're walking through this each and every night. Uh, tomorrow night we'll go. We'll we'll circle back. Um, we'll circle back. Uh, my back is better tonight. My back is better tonight. Uh, I did some lifting today, but I, my back is better tonight. My back is <sighs> Kathy's pretty poop practically. Yeah, well, I get that, Kathy. I get that. Uh, thank you for asking, Michelle. I am doing better tonight. I was not, I was not really in great shape last night. <laughs> I, I probably would have been better had I mixed a martini or, or uh, with, with the pills. Um, then, then they would have had their full effect. But then I wouldn't have been much use, much, very useful. I would have uh, done funny things with all those peas last night. Um, tomorrow night we'll flip back to the employee retention tax credit. I have several questions on that. Um, I will be following up on and uh, we'll be talking about it so that we can help everybody get to the other side of the employee retention tax credit because I want everybody to get everything that you're entitled to so that your business is as strong as it can be growing our way out of this. Growing our way out of this, people. That is what we are doing. Um, you know, this video and everything I talk about here goes over to narts.org slash resale strong by noon the very next day. Noon, I tell you, it's an amazing thing. Adele and Cassandra are amazing at making that all happen. Uh, amazing. Hey, Kitty, I am uh, glad to hear that your bookkeeper uh, got through that. If any questions, you know where to reach me. Um, but this video and everything I talk about is over at narts.org slash resale strong, including a direct link to the YouTube channel. You're not alone running this store where you can like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know when a new one drops. 
I am here every night at more eight than ish. More H eight than ish. Uh, every night live in the Nards Private Facebook group. Live here. If you have a question in between, you just email me. Uh, Neil, N E I L at ECI stores.com. N E I L at ECI stores.com. I'll get that the the uh, instruction sheet posted for the uh, revised 941, uh, Michelle. I'll get that up there for you tomorrow so you have it. Um, and we can talk about it. Uh, if you have a question in between, you just email me, Neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com. We start this program every night, every night, with the Good Morning, Good Night book. If you were not here at the top of the program, we're on page 116. Good morning. I believe in you. Not always in our leaders, not always in the subway schedules, but always in you. You unwavering. Our good night tonight is good night. I believe in you. Not always in our institutions, not always in my own strength, but always in you. You evergreen. There you go. There's your graphics. Hey, Mary Ann snuck in. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good party, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, a winter social and seminar coming this weekend. Have you registered yet at nards.org? You don't want to have FOMO. Do not miss out. Do not miss out. Uh, I will be back here tomorrow night at more 8 than ish, more 8 than ish, and I'll be returning your calls and emails tomorrow. But if you have a, uh, but until then, until tomorrow night at more 8 than ish, know that you, and you, and most importantly you, yes you, you're not alone running this store. Have a great night everybody, I'll see you tomorrow.